Hello everyone, today we're going to look at an application uh, that goes by the name of ICE. ICE is uh, a web app integration tool and it was developed by the, uh, the good folk over at uh, Peppermint OS. Uh, Peppermint is the name, or Peppermint OS sorry, is the name of a, uh, an excellent Linux distribution, very lightweight Linux uh, distribution. So just before we discuss uh, ICE itself, let's just, um, let's just give a shout out to the developers of the application. Um, uh, Peppermint OS. Here's their their website. Um, it's this is a uh, I believe a Ubuntu based uh, distribution, so it's based on uh, on an Ubuntu base. Um, but there's a hell of a lot goes on under the hood with this to uh, to make it even more lightweight, even more polished, even more customized. And it's if if you're looking for um, a super lightweight distribution that isn't as bare bones as some of the open box distributions uh, currently out there, such as this, such as Bunsen Labs then Peppermint OS is a fantastic uh, choice. It really is extremely polished and complete from the box. But one of the interesting features of it is the ICE web application. So what we're going to do is uh, is take a look at uh, how we can include that on non-Peppermint installations. Um, specifically here we've got Bunsen Labs which is running on a Debian stretch, Debian 9 base. Um, you should be able to use this on any Debian base and indeed any Ubuntu based distribution. Um, there is a slight tweak you need to make to the uh, the script, to the program script, if you're running it on Debian, and I'll come, I'll come on to that a bit later in this video. Um, but uh, the basic idea is that you take um, you take an, uh, an online application. So we've all seen, we've all probably used um, Google applications online, Microsoft 365, for example, uh, online uh, graphics editors. Um, and to do those, you'd access them usually through your web browser. Um, and you have to navigate to the site, but it's very much contained within the window of your web browser. Well, ICE takes that um, specific window, that specific online application, and packages it in such a way that your system treats it as any other uh, native application. So it's a very useful tool. Um, now for the purposes of this video, um, we'll use um, uh, an online application by the name of Pixlr. Uh, this is uh, an image editor. Um, quite a full-featured image editor considering it's an online application. Um, you have a number of options there, you have advanced and simple uh, options there to use as well. Um, I believe that uh, Peppermint themselves actually do package this as one of their web apps, or certainly used to. Um, so uh, it would be a good example I think to use, uh, to use here today. So uh, that's enough about uh, where this came from and the application we're going to use. But just before I leave that topic, just a thanks to the, um, the devs and the guys over at Peppermint um, for their help. Uh, when I originally uh, look, looked at installing this, um, I did post on, um, on a fellow YouTuber, YouTuber's uh, video comments that I was looking to do this, and um, the Peppermint dev stepped in and uh, gave some useful advice and help, so that's much, much appreciated. Um, so let's give them a shout out. Uh, Another shout out as well I wish to give to a chap called Colin. Colin, that, uh, he's got a YouTube channel called PCTLC and um, it's actually Colin that alerted me to the fact that there is a package available to install outside of Peppermint that includes this, um, uh, this application. So let's close these and we'll get to it. So first thing we need to do is install the application. So I've already downloaded this. I'll put the download link, by the way, in the notes below the video at the end, so don't worry about having to memorize or capture what you see on screen. I will put notes below. Um, but this is the package. Uh, it's ICE and it's version three, uh, sorry, 5.3.4 and it's a deb file. So any uh, Ubuntu and Debian based system, you should be able to install this uh, on the system and it should pull in any dependencies uh, that it needs. It's already installed on this system, but You've all probably seen this before. The GW package manager would launch when you when you click on that, and you just follow the instructions here. Uh, install the package. It'll go away and do its stuff, and then it's installed in your system. Now, of course, uh, we're using Bunsen Labs, so Bunsen Labs uses a static menu. So when we do install it, it's not going to show um, in our menu system. So we need to add that, um, as I showed in the previous video. Um, but just to cover that off here, you need to open OB menu. You need to select where you wish to insert the application. So I'll put this under, let's have a look. Where are we here? Let's put it under accessories. 
let's just drop in there a new item we'll call it ice ice web apps and the command to launch is simply ice ICE we'll save that close that and now it's in our menu so if we come down to accessories you see we've got ice web apps listed we can launch and that will launch the application this is ice web apps now as you can see this is a Debian system and uh, this um, this application lets you use a, a choice of um, have a choice of browsers. So what it does, it wraps the application in a browser window effectively, and uses the browser in the background to render the page. Um, now it only picks up Firefox on Debian by default. Um, other options such as Vivaldi, Chromium, which is installed on this system, uh, and Chrome are greyed out, and you can't select them. That's because of a change we need to make to the uh, to the script. Um, and it's due to the naming conventions of the applications from distribution to distribution. So Ubuntu, for example, will refer to the Chromium web browser as Chromium-browser. Debian will simply refer to it as Chromium. So the actual um, text within the application script needs to reflect that, and it doesn't as, as standard. It, it's designed, obviously, for Peppermint, and Peppermint is Ubuntu-based, not Debian. Uh, so that's where that, uh, that problem would arise. If all you use is Firefox, you can just run with this uh, this as is, um, and it will work perfectly fine. But before we do that, I'm just going to show you just how to get it so that these other options do appear. And in specific, specifically on this system, obviously Chromium. So let's close that. And now to do that, we need to go back into our file manager. Let's go into File System. We need to go into User. We need to go to Binaries. And we need to search for the ICE script. And you can see it's highlighted it here. Now, if you just open that, it's not going to open it in a neat kind of editable form, and you won't be able to save it, unfortunately. So what you need to do is open as root. Now on Thunar, it's right-click open as root. Whatever your browser, of, sorry, whatever your file manager of choice happens to allow, is what you would choose there. But we open as root. So root password, and now we can actually edit the. Um, the script for this application. Now there are two lines in here that you need to edit in order to make Chromium and or other browsers appear. So you need to edit line 39. So if we, we go up to line 39 here you'll see 39 refers to Chromium but it refers to it as Chromium browser. So we need to just delete the browser from this. Now we also see Chromium browser appear at line 241. So if we come down to 241 241 there we are we see browser chromium browser again just change it to chromium and just save that so that's now updated the script for the ice application we can then close out of that save so now when we launch our ice application which if you remember is in accessories ice web apps you've now got chromium as a selectable item there so let's, uh, let's put it to the test so let's let's uh, let's get this pixel application set up so let's just call it um, pixel up It'd help if I could type and it needs a web address and that's just the web address for the the actual application page that you want to render as a web application now I've already done a, co a copy earlier of the website address, so we'll paste that in. It's https pixelercom slash editor. Now, if you have an icon that you'd wish to use for the particular application, you can select it here. If not, you can select use site favicon. If we select that, it should go away and try and find it for you. And then we simply select apply. And that's job done. Now, or anything other than open box, you can just open up your menu and you should see uh, under internet. So it says where in the menu do you wish to save it? Well, internet is pre selected there. You can select other items, but uh, internet is selected. If you were to select the internet category within your menu, you should then see 
um, the Pixlr application listed as an application. You click it and off you go. This is open box, of course. Uh, we have a static menu, so we need to add the Pixlr application to our menu. Now, they don't launch in quite the same way as uh, a standard applications. So what we'll do is we'll close this. So to add this to our menu, we go down to Preferences, Open Box. We open our OB menu, menu editor. And we come down here and we decide where we're going to uh, to insert the program, so or the application, sorry. So let's do it. Accessories. Uh, and let's do Add Item. And let's call it something, let's call it Pixlr. Now, the command to launch, now this is different depending on which uh, browser you've decided to use uh, to package your application. Now for Chromium, what you need to do in here, and again I'll put this in the notes below, you would type Chromium space dash dash app equals and then the name of the uh, the application. Now the name of the application when it's a web app is actually the web address. So here we can just right click, we can paste our web address. So this is the entry you should see. Um, obviously everything will be the same for any application apart from the web address which you just adapt to whichever application you happen to be using. So now if we save this, we quit, and this is the moment of truth folks. We go to our menu, and we go into accessories and we've got pixel listed and it should launch and there we are you'll see it's launched the pixel editor within its own window within its own open box window and you can you can resize it and select it and change it around and do whatever you would do with a normal windowed program uh, with none of the browser paraphernalia that you'd usually get around it if you were to launch this via the usual uh, web route so just before we leave that, let's just let's close that. Uh, let's just go back into our um, let's go back into our menu. So we'll go back into menu editor. If you'd used Firefox to create your web application, then what you would do is you would come down under accessories. Let's go down to Pixlr. Now you see down here the entry need to be changed for Firefox. And again, I'll um, I'll put in the notes below. Uh, what you need to include here to make it uh, operate if, you, if you've used Firefox as your web browser. Um, so hopefully you found that useful. Um, I think it's a nice uh, it's a nice tool because um, it brings uh, it brings web app, uh, web integration uh, into the kind of desktop uh, desktop system. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, any comments please uh, post them below I'll try to, to answer them if I can't I'll fire them over to the peppermint guys who I'm sure will uh, be only too pleased to help but uh, see you again soon